Hi everybody, just under a year ago, we released a public preview of Project IDX. One of the biggest improvements we made in Project IDX is to bring AI assistance throughout your entire developer journey. We want to make sure that Gemini AI capabilities were right at your fingertips as we're building your full stack applications. It didn't matter if you're working on the front end of your app, the back end of your app, or you're working on a cross-platform mobile app, or any combination of those layers, our AI assistance was easy to adapt to what you were building. Now, on that same vein, earlier this year, we released one of the biggest updates to our AI assistive capabilities. We released a preview of interactive chat that is now available for all of you to use. What interactive chat does is it takes the familiarity of a chat-based interface, which all of us are pretty accustomed to at this point, but it supercharges it with agentic capabilities. With interactive chat, IDX has the ability to deeply understand your entire code base and also take actions on your behalf on your project based on what you are wanting it to do. So in this demo, I'm going to do a, a live coding example of a, a front end application written in HTML CSS JavaScript and a back end written in Go. And I'm going to be using interactive chat throughout to help bring this app to life. Now, I am not a Go expert. In fact, I've probably only written a handful of Go code in my entire life. And so we're going to see how I can use the AI assistive capabilities to translate my intent into hopefully a fully working Go application that allows me to work across the, the front end web layer and the back end Go layer and have everything working really nicely. Now, along the way, I'll also try to highlight some of the other cool new improvements we made to Project IDX in the past few weeks and months. It's gonna be a fun one, so let's get started. Okay, so now I'm in the Project IDX landing page and I'm gonna go ahead and create my front end, so my HTML application. So I'm gonna go to my templates, select simple HTML, and let's give it a name, um, color changer. I'm gonna hit create. This will take a few moments as the VM is being provisioned behind the scenes and the entire IDX environment is brought up for me to use. And so now I have my starting point for my web application already created. I, you know, things are initializing right now. I can see my HTML page coming up and I can see a, a web preview of my application. So this application is almost as empty as you can make it without having nothing displayed. So when I hit press me, for example, I can see the console. I can see some changes being done to my project. You know, the code is pretty empty in my JS file because everything is in line where when I click on the button, let me make everything a little bigger. I can now see that press me is clicked. So what I want to do is I want this application, when a button is pressed, I want the background color of the entire page to change to random value. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring up our interactive chat and I'm gonna first go hit continue to accept the default preferences. And I'm gonna move my web preview to the right hand side so I can actually see it, or my left hand side, so I can see it more clearly. And I'm gonna be using Gemini and AI capabilities to make modifications on the app itself. So the first thing I'm gonna do is this. I'm gonna tell Gemini to change the background color when the button is pressed. So when the press me button is clicked, change the background color of the page to a random value. Okay, I'm gonna hit enter. And it'll take a few moments while it's processing my request. And notice that now it says reading the changes and it says preparing file changes. And so what Interactive Chat has done has taken my request and has gone ahead and figured out what needs to be done here. So I had some updates to it. I'm gonna hit review changes to make sure that the right things are being done here. On the surface, this looks good to me. I'm okay, gonna hit update file and have it go and make the changes on my behalf. And then I get an explanation of what changes were actually made to my project. So I'm gonna go ahead and refresh the page to make sure the new changes are available. I'm gonna hit press me. Notice I'm gonna hit press me right now. You can now see the background color is changing without me having to do anything extra to make this work correctly. So now I'm gonna go ahead and make a few more changes to my project. I wanna go ahead and remove the hello world text. Remove, actually display the hex color value instead of hello world in my application. Let's see if we can actually display the color value itself right above what's being displayed for what says press me. I'm gonna just trust changes, I'm gonna hit review changes, update file, good to go. Let's refresh the page again. And now I hit press me, you can now see the color value changing to reflect the actual background of the color itself. So that's pretty cool. Last thing I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna tell it to center everything on my screen, which is 
which has historically been a complicated thing for most web developers. How do you center something horizontally and vertically? Center all of the content both horizontally and vertically in my page. Okay, I'm gonna go to update file and let me go hit refresh. And now you can see hello world, press me being displayed. Now make the press me button appear below the hex value. This should make some adjustments to have the text display below it. And I'm gonna hit refresh now. Yep, just what I want to do. And the last thing I'm gonna do is when the page loads, display a random background. Actually, no. When the page loads, display the current background color in place of hello world. So that way we don't see hello world ever. We just see the current value of the changes itself. So I hit refresh. You cannot see, press me. Yep, every time you refresh, a random color is loaded and I can now see a color value being displayed instead of just hello world being there. So this is pretty cool. Now, and this also has a nice transition to it when I hit press me so you can see there's a slight animation. I didn't specify that, but Gemini added it on my behalf. I think it's a nice touch, so I'm gonna leave it as is. So now what I wanna do though, is I wanna make sure that the color value that I'm getting here is not hard coded as part of my logic in my JavaScript. I want it to actually come from my Go backend, which I haven't created yet. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have this workspace currently running. I'm gonna go to idxgoogle.com, create another workspace. I'm gonna create my Go project. So I'm gonna hit Go, search for Go here, and I can choose a backend server. I want to choose an API server instead. Now this takes a few moments to go ahead and get up and running. So I've already gone ahead while I was talking earlier about building my, my web app, I've already gone ahead and created the, an API server in Go. It's currently running and you see the bare minimum content needed that a default template provides. So what I wanna do is kind of replicate the same capabilities that I had specified before. I'm gonna bring up interactive chat and I'm gonna yep, give yes permission for it to index and do all the work it needs to do. And then I'm gonna start asking it to make the changes that I wanted to make so that the client experience that I have will now allow me to display a background color that comes from the backend that is from this Go project. So right now in this project, let me see, let me see actually see what exactly is being displayed here. So I'm gonna first go ahead and look at the backend ports that are currently being used. This one has a server that is running and it opens up something that in port 3000. And when I open it, it just says the words, hello world. And you can see that coming from the default project that I've created. I can make this hello and you can see that it is gonna display. Oh, it's currently building my project and you can see that it's running checks, it's starting linting, and once the project is ready, it is running. So now I can refresh, and I can now see hello world going on. So you can kind of see that the project I'm seeing here and the code I'm modifying is corresponding to preview, you can see right now. So I'm gonna go back to interactive chat at this point. I'm gonna say, modify, add an API that, this, that generates a random hex value, return this value as a JSON object. And I'm gonna specify what the JSON object looks like right now. We'll see what exactly it says. So now it's preparing the file changes. Let me go ahead and review to see what's going on. Now I mentioned that I'm not an expert when it comes to Go, but when I do review it, it looks familiar. I can see this new route called random hex that's being added. And there's gonna be a function here that has what needs to be done here. And so that looks to be about right. So I'm gonna go ahead and update file and let's go ahead and make this work. So now it says main.go has changed. It's now running and now I have my server up to date again. So I'm hit refresh. Now in this case, I need to make sure it is actually going to the right endpoint. So it's going to be slash API slash random hex. So let me go ahead and put that in my URL. And I can now see it's a random hex value being specified. Now, what is being specified here is an actual hex value. I did not specify it needs to be a random hex color value. So let me go ahead and do that. Modify the output to be a random hex color value, which makes sense because when you 
tell a computer to generate a hex value, it's going to generate a hex value without realizing there needs to be a, a color file. So I'm going to hit update file. It's going to go ahead and build the project again, and it's updated. Now hit refresh again. Okay, now when I refresh, you can now see there's a JSON object. It says hex color is a property, and the value is now currently the the hex value that we want to do we want to use. So I want to go ahead and now use this output from this into my current front end, which is currently using the client side JavaScript to generate the color value. Now, one of the things we did added recently is the ability to make your port publicly accessible. So that way I can make this port public and then the output of this port will now be, can be used in any public endpoint, including this one, because by default, all your ports are private, only assigned to you and your particular logged in account. And so if you want to create an API server for development, you really can do that without jumping through a lot of hoops. So I'm going to go ahead and unclick or click on this make public lock icon. It says enable access to port 3000. Yes, I absolutely do want to make that public. Now when I hit refresh, I don't see any changes. The exact same behavior is going to be seen. But the difference is that this port, if I were to share it with you on in chat or in any kind of form, you'll be able to access it for as long as this VM is currently running. Now I'm going to go ahead and now tell my particular project here, my color changer project to use this value. So I have a public API endpoint that returns a hex color value, color value. Use the output from this JSON to update the color in, in this project project. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and hit enter. And let's see how we are able to make the changes as a result of it. So preparing file changes, let me review the changes right now. You can see there's a lot of things that are being changed because in this case, we don't want to generate things locally, I can see a response going to our public API endpoint, it says that things look pretty good. You know what, I'm going to go and say, update the file, let's see what happens. So I'm going to go and re hit refresh. Let's see what happens. Okay, I see an error, and the error says could not fetch color, failed to fetch. Okay, that's totally fine. I'm gonna go ahead and launch this particular project in our browser and bring up the Chrome DevTools and get a much deeper look at what exactly is going on. And so let me make the size bigger. Access to fetch has been blocked by course policy because no access control allow origin header is present. That's right, because in the backend I just created, I made the port public, but the request is not designed to be public yet. So I'm gonna go ahead and say, in fact, let me just copy the error message from here and have it take care of it for me. For the hex color API, let's see what's it called again, for the random hex, for the random hex API, add a header to allow public access. This will now make the changes in the project. And let's see what their change look like. Yep, it's setting the header value to that. Update the file. This will take a few moments while the project's being rebuilt again and the port's now public. Now let me hit refresh. Let me press me. And I can now see a call is being made. Now, if I go to network tab, yes, a call is being made as well. Now, what I haven't specified then is how do I make sure the color value is actually being represented. And so make sure to, what does the color value look like? It's hex color, the property is hex color. The returned JSON object has the color value in the hex color property. Use that property to read the hex value. Okay, now I think that might be the last part of the change right here review changes data hex data that hex color yep it changed it from data hex to hex color update file now at this point if everything worked out correctly this should be the last of the changes i need to make so i press me i can now see that the color is in fact changing let me go back to my to chrome and, and i hit press me again to make this much larger as well i look at the network tab i can now see that there are requests being made and the request URL is in fact the VM that I have created right here where I have this particular Go project 
running. And the response from it is incoming from this with every single click. So there you have it. Uh, pretty fast overview of interactive chat. Some of our cool new features like being able to see backend ports, making backend ports public, and the ability to use interactive chat throughout to build an application that had a, a front end and a back end and the communication between them where, as you saw, I didn't actually write any code myself. I never modified any code. I just kind of reviewed it just to show you how the review feature looks like. But I could have probably used normal conversations with my chat assistant to get the app fully up and running. So that's interactive chat for you in a nutshell. And I'm pretty excited to see all the cool stuff you all build with it. So when you get a chance, create some stuff, post in our forums or tag me or the team on Twitter, we'll be happy to take a look and, and see what you're up to. And with that, I'll see you all next time.